Hi everyone, Rich Gonzalez along with Jason Eichelberger here at Veterans Stadium, Buchanan High School in Clovis, California for the 2019 CF State Track and Field Championships. Day two was quite exciting. Only two national leaders and they were all conditioned national leaders, but we had 12 state leaders. And behind those numbers, a lot of excitement, a lot of great performances individually uh, on the track and also in the field, clutch performances and some, you know, just some really impressive shows of athletic ability. Uh, we'll start off first off maybe just talking a little bit about the team competition. On the boys' side, as expected, Clovis and North uh, win the team title, and as expected, Caleb Foster had a big reason to do with it. 28 points individually, and also played a key role in the relay team that also fared very well. On the girls' side, Buchanan. Last night, we thought they about went really big, and then, you know, it'll be a little bit closer. They actually blew out the field. They really came through and won handily on the girls' side as far as the team title goes, their first state title. Um, Jason, as far as individually, any things that really, what's up most in your mind individually? You know, like you mentioned, there were a lot of great things here today. I'm going to start in the throws. I'm going to go with uh, Jocelyn Budwig. Um, you know, when you come into a state final and you're not 100%, being able to block out injury to perform at a high level is something that is not easy for a high school athlete to do. And she was able to do that two lifetime best in the shot and the discus here today to, to win her double state titles and now have three. She joins a pretty select list of athletes that have done that. So a tip of the cap to her. Yeah, definitely. Now she she had a bit better mark last year in the discus throw, but this season, the two seasonal PR is very impressive. On the boys' side. There were a lot of highlights, but the one that I think really in the eyes of the masses has to stick out, Keenan Christian tying the state uh, meet record, 10:30 win legal. The thing that was most impressive about it, now he had a, he had a sweep, also won the 200, but in that 100, Christian Grubb looked really good in the first at start. At 70 meters, he had the lead, and then Keenan Christian with that amazing close pulled it out with that 1030 win legal, just just amazing. Any thoughts on him or anything? Yeah, you, you know, about? being able to see him, you, you you get an opportunity to see just the caliber of athlete. And like you mentioned, Christian Grubb pushed him. He really, really had to dig deep in those last 30 meters. And it, obviously with a short race like that, you don't have a lot of time to kind of rally and get yourself together. What Christian was able to do to get back in the race and to win it was phenomenal in the world. As impressive as Keenan Christian was in the sprints, once played it a few times over, and you get Caleb Foster, the outstanding athlete from Clovis North. 25 feet even windy to win the long jump. 49, I believe it was nine and a half windy to win the triple jump. Finished second in 1371 in the high hurdles and played a key role in the four by 100. The, the, the guy really is at a different level and he's only a junior. Uh, this kid is really impressive. I think beyond the collegiate level, we're going to remember this kid. It's be something pretty special. You know, to pick up what you said, not only physically impressive, but just the composure mentally to be able to balance the events and to do them at such a high level. You don't usually see that in at the high school level, especially the jun at a junior class level. Um, the moment was never too big for him. He was able to go up to different events, do so well, and, and just, oh, you know, I was supposed to do this. <laughs> so very impressive performance today for Foster. The event that he didn't win individually, the 110 highs, there's a darn good reason for that. <laughs> Jamar Marshall of St. Mary's of Stockton, probably the most impressive single performance I saw this weekend on the boys' side. He ran a near flawless te technical race to win that. I, I, my jaw dropped. That was really impressive. You know, watching, just to pick up what you said, watching Marshall there, um, when the gun went off and the systematic way he went over the hurdles, it was phenomenal to see it. Um, obviously, in the field, you had the top three hurdlers in the country there, and he made it look as though they were not in the same league with him when really they are. So fantastic effort by Marshall today. He said he wanted to do something special yesterday, and he definitely followed through on that. In the throws, Daniel Viveros out of Liberty. Uh, he did not come close to his to his seasonal best, which is a phenomenal mark. Yet 68 feet and change is a, is a great mark in any meet. Wins a state title pretty much hands down, dominating fashion. Any thoughts on him? Uh, just a dominant season. He'll go down as one of the best throwers in the state, number three mark all time. Um, just a, a phenomenal young man, and he'll do a lot of good things at Ole Miss. Oh, yeah. Shifting gears to the distances, we knew it was going to be a special group this year with three individuals, Liam Anderson of Redwood, Nico Young of Newbury Park, Matt Strangio of Jesuit. So Matt Strangio opens up, and he wins the 1600 when last year he was defending champ. Well, he won the 3200 last year. And... Uh, 
the, the, way, some, the way he competed in that race and making that move early and very aggressive, uh, there were so many lead changes with key people, or not necessarily even lead changes, but surges in the race. That was one of the most impressive or most exciting four lappers I've seen in the state meet in a long time. For him to win in that race was very impressive, but I got, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to lie. I was thinking, how much is that going to take out of him for the 3,200? And Liam Anderson, he finished third in the race in the 16, and you were wondering, how will he regroup? And then, of course, Nico Young is somewhere else, <laughs> relaxing, getting ready, licking his chops. <laughs> The 3200 comes along, and boy, what a great race because less than a kilometer in, Nico Young makes a big move, breaks the race open, and tells everyone else, come on, let's see what you have. <laughs> All the credit in the world goes to Liam Anderson for going ahead and trying to stay close for several laps, and eventually, Nico just wore him down. Nico had a bit of a negative split, ran a 427 down to a 420, 847 winning time. Not as fast as he did at Arcadia, but still negative splits do really, really well. And he did it, in a sense, solo. Yeah. From two laps on, it was him. So, very, very impressive. Your thoughts of the, of the distances or, or that race in particular? You know, a tip of the cap, obviously, to the competitors that, that really challenged Nico Young, but this was all about him today. Um, they were, you know, doubling and coming back, but Nico Young followed the formula he's done all throughout the most of the season. He, he basically said, come and get me. And the consistency in which he went lap after lap, it just wore everybody else down. And it was really a display of the, the talent we've seen from him this year. Just a phenomenal season and a, what a way to cap it here today. Talking about the distances, let's switch over to the girls' side. So the one individual who I've been really impressed with on, on two years running now, and she's only a sophomore, Jacqueline Duarte out of Chena Hills High School. She didn't really run that well last weekend, and I was really concerned because that was no indication of just how talented she is. Well, we saw today in the final what she could do. 442, state leading mark, number three in the country, and really, really looked like the the flashes of brilliance that she's shown in the past. That was that was a pretty silly performance. You know, this race broke down perfectly for her because she had a chance with about 300, 200 meters to go to display that kick that's become very customary. She has the foot speed that nobody else in this field had, and when she put the hammer down, it was over with. Fantastic, fantastic race for Doherty. Girls pole vault, that was one of the big events coming in because there were so many girls in the field. We had a total of uh, 10 girls that had cleared 13 feet this season, all-time best for our state. And it turns out the person that I thought would win did come through, Ashley Callahan of Rancho Bernardo. She also set a state record for the most 13-foot clearances in a season. This was the 12th time she had cleared 13 feet in a meet. So very, very consistent. You know, Rich, there was a time maybe four or five years ago when one person would clear 13 and it would be a, a huge thing. We had 10 this year. And, you know, Callahan, only a sophomore, so obviously the sky's the limit for her. Where pole vaulting is going now is amazing, and it should be something that we keep an eye on in the future as well. Going back to the girls' actions, one of the great all-around talents, Jaslyn Shearer out of Silver Key High School in San Jose. 28 points scored. First in the in the 100-meter hurdles, runs a 13-24 all-conditioned state leader. Phenomenal. Actually, national leader all condition, I believe, this year. She also goes on, and she wins in her specialty, the triple jump, and she took a second in the long jump. So a uh, great show of athletic ability there. A real talent, and of course, Silver Creek, a lot of the school, over the years, a lot of kids from the Central Coast section doing really well in the long the triple jump. And talking about horizontal jumps, how about the outstanding freshman from Upland High School, Kaylin Harris, 20 feet, 8.5, number two mark in the nation this year, win legal, one of the top 20 marks in California all time. And the big spotlight at the end of the season, the biggest meets, she broke new ground, getting better and better. There almost aren't enough superlatives to describe what we saw out of her. Like you said, every meet, the pressure gets higher and higher. Her level of performance gets higher and higher. Today, she comes out, fouls her first two jumps. You're like, oh my goodness, the disaster could be waiting. She comes out with 20 feet, five and a half inches to not only survive, but post what would have been the winning mark. Next jump, she comes out, boom, 20 feet, eight and a half inches. The, the athlete, the caliber of athlete that she is, is absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, watching her from the beginning of the year, when you kind of heard about, you know, oh, this girl has a lot of talent, let's see what, what really she's all about, to the culmination here today, fantastic. Did suffer a little bit of a knee injury on her last attempt. Um, said she was okay. Obviously, you know, hopefully it goes into the summertime or any competitions and she's okay. But what we saw throughout the CIF season here today was absolutely fantastic. 
So the California state meat, what makes this meat unique, unlike most states out there, it's a single division. It's the best of the best going head to head, and already it's a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal physical talent pool. So it's it's quite a treat for the fans. Any closing thoughts from you regarding this year's state meet? You know, I saw a lot of close competitions, a lot of battles. I could go, you know, Kai Wingo coming back. He was in last place in the boys 800 and the, through the first lap all the way back to win it. Um, Caleb Roberson and Ray Tay Rash have been battling all season in the boys 300 hurdles. Comes down to a finish where both of them are stumbling over the line. Just examples of, of what it takes to be a champion here in California. Obviously, when you win here, it's a big accomplishment, and those athletes that were able to do so today persevered and they were awarded with the state championship. Fantastic show from the kids today. I'll say this coming in, you know, there were five nation leading marks entering the weekend on the boys' side, but in all honesty, I kind of felt like this meet wasn't going to be quite as strong, and it had its moments this year. But really, what really excites me is the fact you've got Nico Young, a junior, he'll be back. Kaylin Harris, freshman. Declan Duarte, sophomore. <laughs> Ashley Callahan, sophomore. Jamar Marshall, junior. Some of the biggest names, the biggest talents of this year are all back next year. And that is really excited because what the tools those kids have really special. All-time talent, as I would say, and they're coming back. Like you said, you know, today was fantastic, but tomorrow is shaping up to be quite bright here in the Golden State. All right. <laughs> for Jason Michael, I'm Rich Gonzalez from Veterans Stadium at Buchanan High School from the 2019 CIF State Track and Field Championships.